Well, so far, I've published two videos in what's going to be a series of eight or nine. And for those of you who were intending to follow this series, I'd like to take a moment out, take stock of the situation, and indicate where this is going to go to in the future. Now, I firstly introduce the general subject area, which is the failure of axles on overland vehicles. And I indicated this is actually quite a widespread problem. I also did a very brief introduction to the area of fatigue and fracture. And what I want to do is to use this knowledge to gain a good understanding about what's actually happening in practice. Now, if this was a well-funded study, there would be a two-pronged approach. The first one would be an analytical approach. We build a simulation model and we would do various studies, runoff results, and see how the predictions compare with what actually happened in practice. And this can be very illuminating. The simulation model would include a stress analysis model, and particularly for the case of fatigue, we'd need to build a loading history or a loading spectrum. And this can be very time consuming. The second prong would be what is often called a failure analysis. I prefer to call it a forensic study. And we focus on the failed component itself. We'd firstly look at the component in situ, and this can tell us an awful lot. We then want to remove the component and take it back to the lab, and the metallurgist would want to have a go at it. They would firstly perform a macroscopic uh, study of the failure surfaces, looking for things like pre-existing flaws. They might also want to slice it up and do electron microscopy. You would also want to find out what you can about the material properties, and if there's sufficient material available, you'd want to run some property tests. Often, however, the quantity of actual material available is greatly reduced and the tests have to be modified accordingly. Finally, we'd want to look at all relevant uh, surrounding data, things like the manufacturing record and the service history. And by a combination of these approaches, we can build up a very complete picture about what actually happened and why the failure occurred. Now, looking ahead to the remaining videos in this series, I'm going to take elements of the two aforementioned approaches. So firstly, I'll do an analytical study. I'll build a simulation model to look at the fatigue life of the casing of the rear axle of a 4x4. And this could, for example, be the Isuzu D-Max, which had the failure on the Canning stop route. And having built and tested this model, I'll then do what's called a parametric study. And in this, you keep all of the parameters constant, apart from one, which you vary. So I might, for example, look at the effect of adding, say, wider tires and wheel spacers on the fatigue life of the axle. I'm also going to look at two or three of the published failures on the internet. I wouldn't dare call it a forensic study because I just don't have the evidence to hand. I've only got the photos which are on the internet and sometimes the owner's comments to support them. But I have to say, it's absolutely amazing what you can deduce just using the evidence in front of your eyes. And I'm going to pull all of these findings together and give you my take on the reasons why these uh, axles are failing. And importantly, I'll give you my recommendation about what to do to reduce the risk of future failures. At the end of this series, I'll include a couple of special studies. One will be on looking at ball housings for CV joints, and another will be looking at semi-floating axle designs. I may add others as time goes on.